Um, I've been in practice many, many years, and I've been in your in your facility. And again, I'm incredibly um, gracious to say that I had that opportunity to be with you and learn from you. In my uh, experience, as well as yours, CR was something that was we were always taught. And in this conference here that we have with Bio Research, we've seen many different ideas. And we've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly in a lot of situations. And you see a lot of ugly. And Dr. Marcello, um, this is Marcello from São Paulo. From Salvador, Brazil. From Salvador, Brazil. Uh, has uh, been spending 15 years or so in, um, in regenerative medicine with the temporal mandible joint in, in, with a whole new concept on how he places the mandible and thinks that the vertical dimension of rest is the position to begin with because the vertical dimension of occlusion is a sequela to that position. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to him because he wants to ask you some questions regarding regeneration of the joint okay. because it was extremely interesting to listen to his lecture. Oh, thank you for your words. So, as not a native English speaking speaker, so <laughs> take a little bit of time to me to like put some ideas in, in English, not in Portuguese. So, uh, first, it's an honor to be here with you, uh, and uh, I have the opportunity to be uh, trained by my mentor, Dr. Jorge Lareta from Argentina, around 2002-2003, and from my first beginning ever, ever since, uh, I have worked with MRI. I'm a radiologist by f previous formation, and it was a kind of easy to me to understand that the, most of the problem we had in occlusion was a sequel, a consequence of some change in pathology. Mm -hmm. And it was difficult to see people around that could support this idea. And so when I around people just uh, like you and like people that I have met in this lecture, it's really a, a pleasure. And so, we, are, we have so, so many concepts in common in this contest. And the interesting part is that we went, uh, I, when I, I listened to the expression TMJ Foundation, I understand maybe a language problem, but it seems that you're talking about the basis of a building, right? And the occlusion will be part of this building. And the interesting part is that to get this regeneration, we work with this kind of uh, rest position, but we really are in search of a very low or even with no nonception uh, input from the TMJ to the brainstem. And together with this, searching for the etiologic factor that first damaged the joint. So as in any other joint of the body, we have found infection, trauma, autoimmune diseases, and so on, and biomechanical problems such, such as uh, childhood fracture of the condyle, as you, you have uh, talked about. And this opened up for us a big range of opportunity to get those condyles in, back in place because we could uh, actually address the cause as the infection or as the autoimmune disease. So I could show at least four cases in this conference a complete necrosis of the condyle, where we could take some genetic analysis of the case, see what gene was connected to what autoimmune disease, and understand the foundation and the organical basis of the patient. So my question is, uh, how you see all these uh, new things and new tools, biometrics, uh, and all those new knowledge that can create this opportunity to regenerate some really, really damaged condyle. Does this fit in your model? Well, to be quite frank, I find it very exciting uh, because for a number of years, you know, I, I felt like I was the only one really imaging temporal mandibular joints to think conceptually about regenerating bone or, or positively enhancing the bite. And I'm only one person, okay? 
and I bring a perspective and I bring a background that, that's unique to me. And I think it's, it's, it's wonderful to have somebody bring a different background and a different perspective and to try to do some of the same things. Uh, you know, and, and you look at people like Brian Nebbe, who has clearly demonstrated in orthodontic patients that they have growth failure uh, from discal damage. And I'm sorry, Mr. Lecture, I, I, I really want to get the video to see, you know, exactly what you're doing. But, you know, I think you're absolutely correct. You're, you're talking about, I talk about mechanical damage because that's what I deal with. That's the mainstream of my practice. But that's not to say that that's the only answer in other causes of, of small condyles. And infection is certainly very realistic. We've, we've talked a little bit about, about complex regional pain syndrome. And I, I, I was alluding to that as a muscle dystonia problem, but in a very big way, it's a circulation problem as well. And so it may well be that, that problems with circulation become a whole different subset of patients who have poorly developing condyles. And that could be a reason why you can't cure an infection. Um, so, you know, I, I would say I, I really encourage you to continue doing what you're doing and to bring more answers to the table because again, who benefits from, from different perspectives? The patients, patients do. And ultimately that goes back into dentistry. It expands our scope in dentistry. It makes all of our practices more exciting. And um, so anyway, let me, let me become your biggest fan. Oh, that's uh, that, that's you know, I, cool. I really hope uh, to see some wonderful uh, new things coming out of what you're doing, okay? It's so welcome to the world of bad joint foundations. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you.